rock star, champion, pioneer, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg had many titles, but perhaps her most beloved nickname was Notorious RBG. She was a women's rights leader and later a pop culture icon. A 2018 biographical documentary film captured her influence and her modesty. Here's a look at RBG. We welcome today Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She's become such an icon. Do you mind signing this copy? I am 84 years old and everyone wants to take a picture with me. <laughs> Notorious RBG. Yeah, yeah. When you come right down to it, the closest thing to a superhero I know. And I am joined now by co-director of RBG, Betsy West. Betsy, great to have you with us. As I mentioned, Ruth Bader Ginsburg really became a pop cultural icon, a sensation. But many people are not fully aware of just how much she contributed to women's rights. You spent a lot of time with her making this film. What do you feel is her greatest legacy? Well, Lana, I think that uh, had Justice Ginsburg not been appointed to the Supreme Court, she had still earned a place in history for what she did for American women. As a young litigator in the 1970s, she brought a series of lawsuits before the Supreme Court at a time when uh, people just took for granted a lot of laws and customs which treated women as second-class citizens. And uh, it was Ruth Bader Ginsburg who had been discriminated against herself as a, uh, a, a top law student getting out of Columbia, top of her class, could not get a job uh, because she was a woman, because she was a mother, because she was Jewish, frankly. Um, she took that discrimination and she fought it head on as in a, in a larger way to convince the Supreme Court to overturn some of these unfair laws and practices. And for that, uh, you know, all women and frankly, all men really owe her a debt of gratitude. All men, interestingly, because so much of the the uh, legisl or the challenges that she made were because um, men were being discriminated against as a way to break through yeah. some of those um, those boundaries that had been put up against a women. A strategic um, choice she made, yes. Yes, and it's interesting how you saw in ways that played out with her relationship with her husband, Martin. Uh, she said, uh, quote, without him, I would not have gained a seat on the Supreme Court. Here's a moment from the documentary when she talks about him. I have had the great good fortune to share life with a partner truly extraordinary for his generation. He was the first boy I ever knew who cared that I had a brain. Can you talk about their relationship and how unusual was it for a 1950s marriage, not only for her to have a career, but for him to be so supportive of her? Yeah, I mean, it was a feminist marriage long before uh, many feminist marriages that Marty Ginsburg, who himself was an accomplished lawyer, understood uh, his wife's talent and uh, when she started to uh, make the case for women's rights and started to have success uh, in uh, arguing in the Supreme Court, he could not have been more supportive. In the beginning of their marriage, she uh, did more of the child care. But when she became even busier, Marty Ginsburg, a busy lawyer uh, himself, began to take on a little bit more. And then, as you alluded to, Lana, uh, when uh, there was an opening on the Supreme Court. Marty Ginsburg, who was a very well-connected lawyer himself, kind of went on a little campaign and just made sure that her name was under consideration. Not that she didn't win that job herself with her, um, you know, interview with uh, President uh, Clinton, but it was Marty Ginsburg who wanted to make sure that people understood who his wife was and what a great justice she would make. Uh, you know, one of the things that I loved about your film is is how we saw, Betsy, that Justice Ginsburg um, marveled at, at her own celebrity. Why was that? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, I think she didn't invent Notorious R.B.G. In fact, she didn't really know what it meant. She had no idea who Notorious B.I.G. was, you know, and it was a play on that. One of, I think her clerks or her grandchildren had to explain to her. And I think she, she had a choice at a certain point when she started to become this pipe pop icon with all the T-shirts and the mugs and the memes. Um, she could have recoiled. Or um, I think what she did was embrace it in a way, in a quiet way, but in her own way, because she understood that it was really spreading her message about the importance of the rule of law and her view of our Constitution and our democracy. And so she actually would give people RBG T-shirts as gifts, and she had a little RBG bag. I mean, she, she got a kick out of it. Well, you know, now we are talking about her, obviously, in glowing, glowing terms. Um, and even though she had dear friends and respect from both parties, she was a stalwart liberal jurist, and that rankled many on the right. In fact, your documentary starts with Ginsburg's critics. Um, but as we look back at her legacy, Betsy, is there an aspect of RBG that people from both sides should be celebrating right now? Well, Absolutely. Uh, yes, she had her critics on the right, but she was known for being someone who valued civil d discourse, even with her uh, ideological opponents. And I think that's something that's really important to think about now in this time of extreme partisanship. Um, she was extremely well liked by her fellow justices, had the famous friendship with Justice Scalia. She thought that in our democracy, it was very important that we be able to talk to each other, uh, to, to have conversations across political lines. I, I find that uh, pretty inspiring right now, if uh, very challenging. Just days before her death, Justice Ginsburg told her granddaughter, quote, my most fervent wish is that I will not be replaced until a new president is installed. Do you think that she felt a burden during this presidency? I think that um, she wanted uh, to stay alive as long as she could, to stay on the Supreme Court as long as she was able to carry out her duties, which she certainly was in the last term. Uh, yeah, I did get a sense that uh, she was really trying to hang in there and trying to do her job. What surprised you the most in making this documentary about Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Well, I mean, many things, but I think ultimately it was her level of determination. Um, she faced so many challenges in her life, her mother dying when she was quite young, the discrimination that she faced, the discouragement, uh, certainly when, she, you know, as the Supreme Court became more conservative and she found herself more often in dissent, and yet she, she never gave up. She was always determined. She was always optimistic. And I think that uh, in visiting, uh, watching her, in her gym, do her workout routine, and to see the kind of uh, passion that she put into that and the fierceness was really a, a kind of a metaphor for the way she approached her life. All right. Betsy West, thank you. Thank you, Lana.